I am pleased to inform you of positive market developments currently in Africa. D8 summit opens in Istanbul, Turkey, as President Buhari makes case for member nations to take advantage of single market initiative in Africa. And we are going to then formally release the new policy to all states and all local governments. Nigeria adopts new national addressing standard for effective communication within and outside the country. Campaign for Anambra governorship election hots up. Political parties converse for votes from the electorate. Extending the invitation to other countries with similar challenges is premised on the need for us to share from their experiences. And security experts in asymmetric warfare conclude deliberations in Abuja. Good evening and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Laure Balahassan. And with me tonight in our Lagos Network Center is Jennifer Igwe. And in Sokoto is Asma'u Habibu Shagari. President, Nigeria has made a case for member states of the developing eight countries to take advantage of the first ever single market for goods and services in Africa towards enlarging their markets as well as facilitating trade and critical investments for sustainable growth and development of their economies. President Mohamed Buhari, who gave the suggestion at the 9th D8 summit in Istanbul, Turkey, restated his commitment to making Nigeria a more attractive country for business and investments. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. With its young and dynamic population of over 1.1 billion people, robust economic growth, strong trade relations, and the will to cooperate in all strategic sectors, the D8 has emerged as one of the world's most promising trade and economic blocks. This summit here in Istanbul, Turkey, where it all started about 20 years ago, is an opportunity for the D8 to consolidate its success. I would like to assure you, President Mohamed Buhari told leaders of member countries that economies that grow fastest and at more sustainable rate are those that actively promote trade and attract investment. Africa, he said, is more than ever ready for business. I am pleased to inform you positive market developments currently in Africa that will support our efforts as members of the D8 to enlarge our markets, facilitate our trade and investments, and develop our economies. In Africa, we are on the threshold of finalizing negotiations to establish the first ever single market for trade in goods and services on our continent, in the continental free trade area for Africa. This will be a win-win for all, including member countries of the D8. The president also made a case for member states to widen their cooperation by increasing trade and investments, as well as establishing manufacturing structures and markets for economic growth and development. Nigeria is committed to and is effectively pursuing a policy of trade and investment facilitation for growth. The gains from trade are reflected in greater competitiveness, improved productivity, job creation, consumer welfare, and prosperity. He used the opportunity to reaffirm Nigeria's readiness to host the D8 Ministers of Trade and Industry in Abuja next month. Records show that the D8 has a combined GDP of $3.7 trillion, an export volume of about $694 billion, inter-organizational trade of $100 billion, as well as an annual growth rate of 6%. Though encouraging, both the new chairman of the D8 Council, President Erdogan of Turkey, and his predecessor and Prime Minister of Pakistan expressed the belief that more needs to be done. During the summit, the D8 member countries signed an MOU with the Islamic Development Bank towards supporting their objectives for growth and development. From Istanbul, Turkey, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the 9th D8 summit has been rounded off with member countries reaffirming their resolve against all threats to economic development as well as peace and prosperity in their respective countries, especially terrorism. 
in a 31-point declaration ratified at the end of the summit, the leaders also recommitted themselves to peace, democracy, partnership and progress as core foundation for achieving sustainable economic growth and well-being of their people. State House correspondent Adam Musambo again reports that a plan of action to operationalize the D8 instruments in priority areas of cooperation has also been approved. The summit with the theme Expanding Opportunities Through Cooperation coincided with the 20th anniversary of the developing aid and the completion of its first cycle in the formulation of policies, instruments and institutional framework. The Member States therefore resolved to utilize existing synergies towards widening the scope of cooperation into critical areas of project implementation through joint efforts in a more concerted manner. To this end, a D8 project support fund is to be established to explore more financing options in order to achieve the desired objectives. The D8 member countries also promise to develop new strategies towards promoting sustainable growth and development of the agricultural sector, energy, aviation, tourism, banking, as well as increased connectivity in all modes of transportation to promote intra-trade and people-to-people -people contact amongst member states. One of the most important takeaways is that like, it's time to move from conceptualization and ideas to implementation. And a lot of the implementation is actually partnering with the private sector for development. I think there's just a sense of renewed urgency and impetus and commitment to um, you know, trying to ensure that economic cooperation is increased between developing nations so that they can develop and reach their full potential. The 10th D8 summit will be hosted by the People's Republic of Bangladesh in 2019. From Istanbul, Turkey, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. And before departing Ankara for Istanbul, President Muhammad Buhari had saluted the courage of the international media as well as the people of Turkey for demonstrating high sense of responsibility in defending the aftermath of July 15, 2016 failed coup attempt in the Republic of Turkey. This was at a meeting with the Speaker of the Grand National Assembly of Turkey, Ismail Kharaman, during a visit to the Parliament building in Ankara. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. President Muhammad Buhari and Speaker Ismail Kharaman spoke at length on the 2016 failed coup attempt in Turkey, which claimed over 250 lives of the Turkish citizens. The Nigerian leader said the international media must be commended for the constructive coverage of the unfortunate incident, thereby making the world clearly understand what happened and the swift response by the Turkish government and its people. He reiterated Nigeria's solidarity with Turkey in consolidating democracy, rule of law and good governance. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Oyama accompanied the president to the parliament building. Assured him of Nigeria's total support for uh, Turkey's uh, democracy and uh, reassured him that Nigeria under no circumstances uh, would uh, be a base uh, for anyone uh, who would uh, or tries to destabilize uh, a Turkey uh, in any way whatsoever. He said that for uh, two countries with the size of economy of, of, of both, uh, the level of trade should be much, much higher. So um, the speaker was, was keen to, I think, emphasize the, um, the battle for democracy in Turkey and, and the importance of um, Nigeria to Turkey. Uh, recognize Nigeria as um, a powerhouse uh, in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa and indeed in Africa, and why Turkey is keen to maintain good relations uh, with Nigeria and to increase the level of trade. During the visit, President Muhammad Buhari was guided on tour of the damaged part of the Grand National Assembly by a bomb during the failed coup attempt and laid a wreath at the site. He also made an unscheduled appearance at the Turkish parliament in session. From Istanbul, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And back home, a high-powered delegation comprising the vice president, governors and leaders of the All Progressives Congress was in Onisha, Anambra State, earlier today, where they joined other teaming supporters of Dr. Tony Nwoyi, the party's governorship candidate in the November 18 election, to kick off his campaign. Abdullahi Suleiman Iaji reports. 
thousands gathered in a rally at the Synth Cathedral Anglican Church Onicha in a show of solidarity for the governorship bid of Dr. Tony Nguye. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo said the federal government is committed to the completion of the second Niger Bridge, the East-West Road, the Coastal Rail Project, among other people-oriented programs, as he urged people of Anambra State to vote Dr. Tony Nguye as their next governor. The APC government is a government that will do everything we have promised. For the first time, the president, President Muhammad Buhari, went by himself to negotiate the facility to do that second Niger Bridge. And that is why the second Niger Bridge is in our, in our current budget and we have provided for it. Presenting the party's governorship flag to Dr. Tony Nguye, national chairman of the APC, Chief Odigye Oyegun, urged people of the state to ensure the victory of the party on November 18th. Tony, this is your flag of victory. Carry it wherever you go. I know you. I've been part of you. I've labored with you. I've struggled with you. I promise you that if I'm elected the governor, I'm going to create jobs. The APC governorship flag bearer thanked the party for the support and pledged to work with President Muhammad Buhari to continue to enhance the lives of Anambra people. APC governors, party leaders in the zone, and political stalwarts in Anambra state were on hand to lend support to Dr. Tony Nguye. Abdullahi Suleiman Iaji, NTA News. And as the campaign for the Anambra governorship seat hots up, Governor Willie Obiano has requested the deployment of three detachments of police units to Onisha North and South Council areas to ensure adequate security of lives and property. The governor was speaking during his re-election campaign rallies at Onisha and Newi. Benson Osadebe reports. Governor Obiano said the aim is to tackle recent move of robberies in Onicha and the environs. He charged the people of the two council areas of Onicha North and Onicha South local government areas to support his second term bid to enable him to consolidate on the transformation of the state. I don't mind it's a devil's uh, workshop. We don't want uh, you yourselves to be idle. We want you to be very uh, uh, properly engaged. Addressing members of the electorate in Newi North and Newi South local government areas, Governor Obiano promised to tackle the erosion menace in the communities. He also spoke on his commitment towards making Newi the real industrial hub of the country. Party stalwarts, including Ambassador Bianca Ojuku, first female governor of Anambra State, then Veji Etiaba, urged the electorate to support the party for a brighter future for the state. Chairman of the campaign committee, Chief Victor Ume and Professor Charles Soludo, described ABGA as the only political party through which the Igbos can gain relevance in Nigerian political space. All the other has used the resources available to work for us. We don't steal money in ABGA. Now let me tell you why ABGA is successful. Anabasa is successful. It's because of ABGA. Any person who put there as governor will leave him to work for the people of Anambra State. Various support groups gave performances at the inaugural rally in the four local government areas. From Newi, Benson, Osadebe, NTA News. A new national addressing standard and guidelines has been adopted for the country. At a meeting by the National Addressing System Council, chaired by the Vice President Yemi Oshin Bajo, it was observed that the Nigerian National Addressing Standard and Guidelines would provide easier and more effective communication within and beyond the country. State House correspondent Jide Onifadi reports. A standardized addressing infrastructure and database is an asset for national development and effective service delivery. So say members of the council. The, the benefit of value is enormous. I'm happy that uh, the Ministry of Communications has come up with this uh, beautiful agenda. And uh, we see it as uh, an enabler uh, to drive trade and commerce, drive industrialization, drive economic growth, drive well-being. The existing addressing infrastructure and database is seen as inadequate unorganized and largely inconsistent with best global practices. We are going to, you know, uh, bring in all of these suggestions which, you know, we had today and we are going to then formally release the new policy to all states and all local governments. That will make the job of NIPOS easy, 
that will make the job of INEC easy. It will make the job of virtually every sector of the economy easy because we'll then be able to trace correct addresses. As observed by stakeholders, the policy would not only conform to global best practices, but would enhance the socio-economic development of the country. The State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. We told you earlier that the D8 summit has been rounded off in Turkey. And joining us now in the studio for a discussion on the just concluded D8 summit is a retired diplomat, Ambassador Suleiman Dahiru. You're welcome to NTA Network News. Thank you for having me. Um, how best can you, um, dis how best can both countries, Nigeria and Turkey, achieve security cooperation? Uh, the D8 has been on for the past 20 years. I happen to have represented Nigeria at, as its eminent person to the eminent persons group. Uh, the D8, the conception was excellent. What has been lacking is the political will to make it move forward. Turkey in, and Nigeria in particular have shown keener interest in making the organization move forward. But based on my membership of the eminent persons group, there's a lukewarm attitude by some other members. I don't want to mention any name. But what I can say is that Nigeria and Turkey have been prominent and excellent members of the D8. And if they can get the other members to do what is right, I think it will be something that other organizations would like to copy. Um, do you think um, Turkey can help Nigeria in terms of um, the security challenges Nigeria is faced with? Yes, Turkey can help Nigeria a lot. If you go back to medieval history, the Turkish Empire almost captured most of Europe and some parts of the Middle East and even Africa. So it is a country with a long history of military prowess. So it can help Nigeria if Nigeria is ready to cooperate fully. In terms of the security challenges that Nigeria is facing, Turkey is also facing similar challenges from the Kurdish rebels. So if they harness their resources, I think they will get a lot out of the cooperation. Um, in terms of investments, how do you think Turkey can come in? Because um, they, um, so far they would like to come and invest in the country. So in what area do you think um, Turkey can come in? Based on my experience of Turkey, it is an industrialized country. It can invest in Nigeria. And Nigeria can reasonably get help from Turkey in areas that Nigeria wants assistance. But everything depends on the political will. But I am sure, based on my experience of membership of the, uh, of, uh, the eminent person group, that Turkey is ready to move into Nigeria to assist. And if you remember, Turkey already has, or Turkish nationals have established schools all over Nigeria. And they have hospitals also that are doing very well. But these are not the two areas that Nigeria can benefit from Turkey. They are 
lots of other areas. The question is identifying which areas you want Nigeria to benefit from Turkey. Um, you remember the near diplomatic row over Turkish schools in Nigeria. How significant is this visit? It is unfortunate. In my opinion, Turkey tried to export its domestic problem to other countries. As for the Turkish schools in Nigeria, I don't think diplomatically it was wise of Turkey to ask Nigeria to close down the schools. If Turkish nationals that are in Ni resident in Nigeria doing their legitimate businesses have done anything wrong, there are laws within Nigeria to take care of the situation. But I don't think it is right for a foreign country to tell Nigeria that it should not allow Turkish investments in Nigeria. If they run foul of the laws of Nigeria, of course they will be dealt with. It. But if they have not done anything, I don't think it was right for Turkey to tell Nigeria to close down those schools. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. I've been speaking with Ambassador Suleiman Bahiru. Thank you very much. And talking health, Minister of Health Professor Isaac Adewale says Nigerians who are desirous of first class medical services will no longer need to travel abroad following the commissioning of the Afe Babalola University Teaching Hospital at Duikiti. Professor Adewale made this remark at the inauguration of the ultra modern hospital. Michael Olaleye reports. Sited on 60 hectares of land, the 400-bed ultra-modern teaching hospital is well equipped with state-of-the-art facilities like 3D digital mammogram, 4D ultrasound bone densitometer, and three different modulo theater. Professor Adewale commended the vision of the founder of Abad with the optimism that the hospital has established the solid foundation for changing the fortune of medical services in Nigeria. Very up to date and modern, and it will go a long way in addressing medical tourism in Nigeria. I will recommend it to any Nigeria. What makes the teaching hospital special is the partnership with reputable health institutions that will complement the goal of offering a one-stop shop for medical services. Are Afe Babalala was obviously satisfied with the feat, which he believes is the answer to outward medical tourism. I've always dreamt of great things. Mm. I'm a great dreamer. Mm. It is those who fulfill their dreams that can become successful people. The ceremony opens a new chapter in the history of medical services in Nigeria with the assurance that medical facilities that will reflect the reality of this century will continue to be established in Adwekiti. Michael Olaneye, NT News. Servicom, the custodian of guidelines for service delivery in the country, has evaluated the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC Servicom's compliance, and presented the report to the public. Part of the recommendations from the evaluation is for the agency to put in place measures to mitigate the delays associated with over-centralization of most registration processes in order to reduce the delays and service failures currently experienced by clients. Health correspondent Rabi Abdullah has more on the findings. I urge you to continue to improve for the good of our nation and for the betterment of all citizens of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Eight service windows of NAFDAQ comprising the headquarters in Abuja, Lagos Operational Headquarters and State Offices were evaluated using the Servicom Index made up of service delivery customer, organizational effectiveness, accountability, policy commitment, and innovation, where the agency's strengths and weaknesses were analyzed, followed by recommendations. For all the findings we have recorded here, and all the discussions we have held, the weight of what the customer says is what overrides every finding. And because the customer, by best practice, is to be at the center of our service delivery process and systems. At the end, 
Savicam's ranking of the agency was two star out of the five star benchmark, with the Lagos operational headquarters getting the highest rating of 52.2 percent. We want to have at least three star. Some of the aspects also will be four, four stars. So, and that's what we are working towards. Jointly, we shall make it better. Servicam, an acronym for Service Compact with All Nigerians, is an initiative of the federal government established in 2004 with a focus on improving the quality of life of citizens for better development. In Abuja, Rabi Abdullah. NTA News. A conciliation meeting to resolve industrial disputes involving the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, agreed to implement legitimate claims to deserving staff. The meeting convened at the instance of the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Labor and Employment, Bolaji Adebi, agreed that the management of NEMA should work with the association to conclude the process of acquiring life insurance policy for staff of NEMA within one week. Other agreements include fast-tracking the process of implementation of hazard allowances, compensation package for the families of the deceased staff, in line with the provision of the public service rules, plus other implementation of other term of agreement reached. You're watching NTA Network News. Time now to pause for some messages. The news continues shortly. From 1967 to 1970, Nigeria went through a horrifying civil war. It didn't matter who was wrong, all right, everybody suffered. Those who fought that war say it should never happen again. Say so a lot of people will say, but you were leading the first one. Yes, I led the first one. I don't think a second one is necessary. We should have learned from that first one. Otherwise the dead would have been to no avail, would all have been in vain. The words of our elders are full of wisdom. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Give me the value pack. <clears throat> Helen! You do great value shopping. Absolutely. I'm a champion at getting value. Then you must have bought the Hapik 200 ml. Why Hapik when I have this? Even after applying them 10 times, they won't give a sparkling clean toilet. Impossible. Challenge. The target and bleach can't give a sparkling clean toilet even after 10 times. But Hapik 200 ml gives a sparkling clean toilet at one go. Wow. Hapik 200 ml. Real deal. <laughs> now only 200 naira. Four years ago, we're told Ndia Nambra that it's forward ever and backward never. Today, we've delivered a better Anambra. Our homeland is safe and secure, our hospitals are better, and our capital city more beautiful. Workers are paid on time, agriculture is all-time high, we've improved infrastructure and have been outstanding in education. We've united warring communities and created religious harmony. We delivered 181 projects in 181 communities based on their needs. Little wonder, we've attracted over $4 billion investments inflow, creating jobs for our people. We did all this when our nation is in recession. Don't you feel better now? Being Onyanambra, it's better today. Let's vote for a greater tomorrow. Vote Abga. Vote Willi Obiano. Better today, greater tomorrow. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Every day, I see patients who come to me suffering from infectious diseases caused by germs. From typhoid to diarrhea, flu, cough. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily when we use the toilet from our door handles from other surfaces we transfer to others without realizing that is why we recommend Dettol Antiseptic Liquid protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs be Dettol sure
The Ministry of Budget and National Planning, in collaboration with the Niger State Government, regrets to announce the postponement of the Joint Planning Board and National Council on Development Planning Meetings, earlier scheduled to hold on the 24th to 26th October 2017 in MENA, Niger State. The meetings will now hold on the 28th to 30th November 2017 at the same venue. All inconveniences are highly regretted. Leon Lawrence Alibo, Permanent Secretary, announcer. Win a share of 100 million naira with Malta Guinness. Find your code. SMS it with your name to 32011. 1 million naira plus cash and airtime prizes to be won every week. Malta Guinness. Let's go. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Welcome back. This is NTA Network News. The need to harness Nigeria's diplomatic relations with neighboring countries for sound economic and diplomatic advancement has been emphasized. This was the consensus of Senate President Bukola Saraki and the Speaker of the Ghanaian Parliament during a bilateral meeting aimed at boosting trade relations. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunlui reports. Although geographically the two countries are close, numerous trade opportunities to take advantage of have not been fully tapped into. And this meeting on the sidelines of the just-concluded 2017 Interparliamentary Union Assembly in St. Petersburg, Russia, aims to address this critical issue. As Nigeria, we can see Ghana as a very close ally, yeah. brother, and that as such we want us to be able to be on the same page for most issues and provide leadership in, in our ECOWAS sub-region. Actual economic right of the individual is something that we should not take for granted. The Senate President also commenced negotiations for improved trade relations between Nigeria and Russia, saying that relations between the two countries was nowhere close to where they should be. He was interacting with the chairperson of the Council of the Russian Federation, Valentina Matevienko. Saraki also took time to engage the Nigerian community in Russia. The efforts that our government, the EPC government led by President Biden, some of the efforts we've been doing back home to try and, and reposition the country. And that is why there's a great fight on the side against corruption. That we must, and the National Assembly, we have passed four different bills support government on that. For those of you who are here, find a way of acquiring skill that is going to be beneficial to Nigeria. The Senate President assured that the 8th National Assembly will look into enacting or amending existing laws to include reintegration of Nigerians offered scholarships by the federal government. Dennis Adigunlui, NT News. Ogun State Governor Ibikunle Amosun has assured residents that the 2018 budget will positively impact lives and overall development of the state. The governor gave the assurance at the town hall meeting on the 2018 budget organized by the state government. Correspondent Hakim Jimo completes the story. While addressing the gathering, the Ogun State Governor Ibikunle Amosun promised the the contributions of the representatives of the groups will be considered in the budget. He said the meeting is a platform through which the plight of the people formed part of the input of the budget, noting that his administration holds the general public a duty to improve their welfare. I want to leave this sustainable environment in the state. The era of strengthening the is over in the state. We should strengthen the institution. 
We don't need to go anybody for things to run. Governor Amosan promised to complete ongoing projects across the state before the expiration of his tenure. The State Commissioner for Budget and Planning, Ms. Aden Relay Additional, stated that the abundant mineral deposits, natural resources, arable land, and tourism potentials make the state one stop for local and foreign investors. And turning our attention now to security matters, an international seminar on managing asymmetric security challenges in the 21st century has ended in Abuja. Participants recommended that the local populace must be protected and motivated to provide real-time intelligence report to security agencies for proactive counter-terrorism operations. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Asymmetric warfare involves the use of unconventional weapon and strategy in fighting, usually devoid of a defined front line. These tactics commonly used by terrorists has become a global 21st security challenge due to its growing complex nature and development in science and technology. The task before these experts is to draw lessons from the challenges and peculiarities common to participating countries in the management of asymmetric security challenge. Identifying and cutting off the sources of terrorist funds, weapons, are crucial for effective management of asymmetric security challenges. Extending the invitation to other countries with similar challenges is premised on the need for us to share from their experiences and develop synergy. Close international collaboration, improve funding of security agencies, and enhance research to address conflicts rather than suppression were among the recommendations. Egypt uh, has a lot of uh, involvement in the asymmetric threats, especially when it was fighting bad guys in Sinai, and we overcame them, and we have a good opportunity, especially for the international cooperation, to overcome these bad guys. To gather experiences of other countries, to see how we can leverage on that in fighting uh, terrorism. 23 countries participated in the four-day event, organized by the Nigerian Army Resource Center, Abuja. Ismail Musa, NTA News. Jennifer has the next set of reports from our Lagos Network studio. Hello, Jennifer. It's over to you. Thank you, Larry. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. A two-day international summit on examination malpractices has opened in Lagos. The summit organized by the West African Examination Council, WIEC, seeks to bring stakeholders in education and evaluation together for a cross-fertilization of ideas on how to eradicate examination malpractices in West Africa. Jen Ujuku has the report. Examination malpractice has been described as one of the worst forms of corruption in the education sector as it compromises the validity of text measures and reliability of test results. The menace has continued to post destruction to WAIEC and other educational institutions across the sub-region. Its devastating effects on educational assessment have worsened with the advent of social media. The summit therefore seeks to have best measures, strategies and innovations that will usher in an era of fraud-free public examination in the sub-region. dedicate a large chunk of our budget into fighting exam practice, which ought not to be. Uh, but that is the only way out because as you put one measure in place to counter whatever they do, at the, the next exam they devise another means. And we have to go ahead too. Chairman Emeritus Wayek, Professor Pius Augustine Obaya, stressed on the ill effects of examination malpractices on the students, homes and schools, as well as the society. If we are teaching, okay. teaching is participatory. Uh -huh. It's not, I talk, you write down notes. So I'm looking at you for not participating. I'm looking at you for being even tired because you are too brilliant. Uh, eh? okay. I'm looking at you, you learn it faster than this, and I adjust how we do it. Okay. Hmm? So by next day, everybody has known it. The two-day summit attracted stakeholders in the education sector, including registrars of JAMB, NECO, and NAPTEP, among others. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku, NTA News. Nigeria has recorded significant improvements in liberalizing business environment, but there is need to do more in the areas of effective implementation and compliance with executive orders. 
Secretary Presidential Enabling Environment, Business Environment Council, PEBEC, Jumoke Oduole, stated this at a one-day stakeholder sensitization workshop on ease of doing business in the maritime sector. The event was organized by PEBEC in collaboration with the Nigerian Ports Authority in Lagos. Musa Toliat completes the story. View of the fact that the 60-day National Action Plan on Ease of Doing Business in 2016 has helped to liberalize the operations of ministries, departments and agencies of government, the Secretary, Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, Jimake Oduwali, said, The sensitization workshop provides a platform for stakeholders in maritime sector to interface with PEBEC and MPA with a view to working out a symbiotic approach to drive effective service delivery at the nation's seaports. The touch points between importers and government agencies have been reduced to just one, with customs now having the role of coordinating physical examination of cargoes. Managing Director, Nigerian Ports Authority, Hadiza Bala Osman, who was represented, stressed that the NPA has redoubled its efforts to implement the Executive Order 01. The authority has also put in place command and control communication intelligence. It will provide an interface with other notable stakeholders for safety and security. The event afforded stakeholders in the maritime sector to bear their minds on various challenges militating against smooth operations at the ports. We are trying as much as possible to do with what we have. The most important thing about managing this situation now is to do examination of what we have. The scanners have come back. Some agencies closed by 4 o'clock in the ports. So we are now discussing about 24 hours. The ports need to be connected with the three modes of transport. Validation from the private sector wasn't forthcoming. So this 60 days is to drive awareness, drive sensitization, and make sure that implementation is vigorously adhered to. The Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council says the sensitization workshop reinforces the need for concerted efforts to revamp the economy. In Lagos, Musa Tolia. NTA News. More on business. Nigeria's huge revenue shortfall identified as bane of infrastructural development as Central Bank of Nigeria releases guidelines for watch list of fraudsters. Let's join Abola De Salami for more on business news. Hello and welcome to business news segment. As efforts are being intensified by the federal government to deliver on its promises of providing critical infrastructure and to reposition the economy to the path of growth. The need for a boost in revenue generation has been emphasized. Financial experts say the projected revenue for 2017 budget is yet to be achieved from the oil and non-oil sector, hence the need to borrow in the short term in order to stimulate growth of the economy. The government has to borrow to finance even the recurrent portion of the current 2017 budget talk less of the capital expenditure. If you look at the capital expenditure budget in 2017, the capital expenditure budget of 2.424 trillion is to be funded entirely from borrowing of 2.35 trillion. Meanwhile, the Debt Management Office says the federal government proposed $5.5 .5 billion borrowing is geared towards financing capital projects. The office clarified that the first component of $2.5 billion represents new external borrowing as provided for in the 2017 Appropriation Act to finance deficits in the budget, while the $3 billion external borrowing will be used to repay some of the existing domestic debt. The Central Bank of Nigeria has issued a regulatory framework for the bank verification number operators, as well as watch lists of fraudsters in the banking industry. The initiative, according to the Apex Bank, is to address the increasing incidences of fraud. Now let's take a quick look on the closing figures on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. At the close of Friday's trading, investors purchased shares worth 106 million, valued at 1.8 billion naira, which exchanged hands at 3,193 deals, with an all share index of 36,587.31 basic points, while the market capitalization finished at 12.5 trillion naira. Stock market reports hence our business news segment for tonight. The news continues shortly. Please stay with us. Thank you, Salami. Now you're still on to NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. 
When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. Baby, do me jack. Now you can find Coke Studio in your Coca-Cola bottle. Simply check under the crown for a code, dial star 505 hash and send the code to download exclusive music, coloring back tones and wallpapers of your favorite artists. Catch the show on AIT every Sunday by 6 p.m. Promo exclusive to MTN subscribers only. Coke Studio, where music meets. Kinde suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the daring and invincible Louis the Mosquito. Responsible for 200 malaria cases all on its own. Is there anything that can kill Louis? Party! Presenting Morty's Soul Guard. Its powerful formula kills malaria mosquitoes fast. So, get Morty's Power Guard. The Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, the Made in Nigeria campaign. In the midst of unprecedented multiple challenges, our great country Nigeria, as Africa's largest economy, is surely marching on to a new era of all-round prosperity, especially through re-engineered and diversified economy. Powerfully driven by the change agenda of President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. We will patronize local entrepreneurs. We will promote the manufacturing powerhouses. Our objective is to make Nigeria a new manufacturing hub. It is not time to complain. It is time to join the campaign. It is time for economic recovery, growth and diversification of our economy. By Made in Nigeria. Many thanks for rejoining us. This is NTA Network News. Executive Secretary of Pension Transition Arrangement Directorate, PTAD, Sharon Ikeazo, has applauded President Muhammad Buhari for approving the release of funds for the payment of retired war-affected police officers from the Southeast and South-South zones. She stated this at a forum in Enugu. James Okmare Kocha reports. The struggle of the retired war-affected police officers ended in Enugu with the receiving of a lot by the retirees who have waited for 47 years since the end of the Nigerian Civil War in 1970. The affected officers were officially reintegrated into the service of the Nigerian police in the year 2000 by President Olusegun Obasanjo. But it was not until 2016 when President Muhammad Buhari approved the verification coordinated within one year of office of the Executive Secretary Sharon Ikazo. Addressing the retirees at the forum in Enugu, the Executive Secretary Sharon Ikazo said she was delighted that at the end, the retirees were receiving their money. So every month now, they'll be receiving their monthly pensions. So to me, this is like uh, putting closure to the injustices. Right inside the hall and to the delight of the retirees, the button was pressed and the alert started entering their phones. Their joy knew no bounds. <laughs> It's a joy. It's a fulfillment of um, long years of struggle. Some of the retirees expressed their joy for the payment and thanked President Muhammad Buhari for the release of the funds. A promise fulfilled is what they have done. That shows the integrity of government. Over 460 retired war affected police officers are involved in the exercise. With some, they are next of kin to receive for their late fathers or husbands from Enugu. James Oparikocha, NTA News. Motorists and commuters have expressed concern over the poor state of Mina Suleja Road, saying it endangers movement of people, goods and services. Mukhtar Abubakar Wuhu has an update on the condition of the road. Mina Suleja Road is an alternative route and gateway to other parts of the country, especially the northern states for people coming from southwestern states. 
Although the present administration inherited the road in a deplorable condition, in spite of the contract awarded for the dual carriageway by the immediate past administration, efforts for interim intervention by the Niger State government in 2016 to repair the vast portions of the road, reading with potholes, was put on hold as a result of increasing number of heavy duty and articulated vehicles plying the route from the southwestern part of the country. The situation, however, wasn't with the collapse of the bridge along Makwa Makera Tegina Road through which the articulated vehicles pass to bringing Gwari Kaduna axis as they have to divert through Minasuleja Road to provide their services. The Niger State Government again intervened with the rehabilitation of some portions of the road, but the about 10 km span between Kwakuti and Lambata is a dead trap due largely to the increased number of articulated vehicles on daily basis. State intervention along that route is running to almost about 3 billion. Federal government will not even reimburse you until when you have completed that uh, repairs. It was sometime last week that now the state wrote seeking for permission to carry out maintenance work. Niger State Deputy Governor Ahmed Mohamed Keso, as well as other road users, lament hardship experience. But we are appealing to the federal government to come to our aid, not only uh, because of uh, Niger State, because of the investors. The way the situation being now is very terrible. It's serious frustration. You are tensed up. Uh, Makwa, down over the other side there, is bad. It's no good. That was why we are passing through this side. Even if I, myself, I'm going to Kaduna, I follow this road. On the dual carriageway project, work completely stopped on the first phase, which was awarded in 2010, while grading continued on the second phase, which was awarded in 2015, prior to the general elections. Mokhtar Abubakaru, NTA News. Time to join Asmau in Sakwato for more reports. Thank you, Laurie. Good evening and welcome to Sokoto. In a bid to complement government's effort in the provision of health services to the people, the National Youth Service School NYSC in Sokoto has conducted a free medical outreach to rural dwellers in Dengeshuni local government area of the state. Safiya Abdullahi has the report. The initiative by the NYSC was aimed at assisting the communities with drugs to improve their health condition. During the outreach, patients with different ailments were diagnosed and treated alongside those with minor cases. The state coordinator of NYSC, al Haj Musa Abakar, said the gesture was meant to provide and complement government's effort in providing health delivery service to communities. He said the drugs donated were a contribution they got from the Ministry of Health, Sokutu. Director of Disease Control Ministry of Health, Dr. Amin Shehu, lauded the effort of NYSC, saying this is a welcome development. While appreciating the gesture, the village head of Fajaldu town, Al Haj Ahmad Baraya Zaki, commended the NYSC effort and prayed for more success in their endeavors. He further advised members of his community to always enroll and encourage their children to study in both Western and Islamic education. Some of the beneficiaries expressed their gratitude and assured to use the drugs given to them judiciously. In Sokoto, Sophia Abdullahi, NTA News. The 12th Waziri of Sokoto, Dr. Usman Junaidu, is dead. He died at the age of 85. Dalhat Abdullahi reports that the funeral prayer attended by many personalities was conducted at the Sultan Bello Mosque, Sokoto, shortly after the congregational Jumaat prayer. Among the personalities that attended the funeral prayer of the late Wazir in Sokoto, Usman Junaidu, were Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad Abuka III, Governor Amin Wazir Tambol, members of the Sultanate Council, serving and former members of the State Executive Council, former and serving members of the National Assembly and the State Legislature. The funeral prayer was led by the Chief Imam of Sultan Muhammad Bello Mosque, Sokoto, Liman Malami Akwara. Late 12th Wadiri of Sokoto, Usman Junaidu, was born in Gedadawa area, Sokoto, in 1932. Late Osman Junaidu became the 12th Wadiri of Sokoto in January 1997. He was survived by 12 children, many grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Among his sons 
a professor of veterinary medicine with Osman Danford University, Sokoto, Professor Abdul Qadir Osman Junaidu, and Sokoto, Dalatu Abdullahi, NTA News. And that's our package from Sokoto is back to Laurie in Abuja for more on network. Thank you, Asma'u, and still to come, happenings in the world of sports. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service, the production and distribution of counterfeit medicine and adulterated food products have negative impact on our health and economy as a whole. I urge all Nigerians to support NAVDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. I was distressed to notice that some of the comments, especially in the social media, have crossed our national red lines by daring to question our collective existence as a nation. This is a step too far. One nation bound in freedom Peace and unity Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Welcome back, and now a quick check on the weather.